What's going on everyone and welcome back to Gary's Mod Game Mode Scripting. Today we are going to be recreating our menu to not only make it more performant, but also prepare us for an inventory system we will be making a few episodes from now. But anyways, for this we only need the custom menu.lua file. So go ahead and get that open. And the first thing I want to do in here is simply just remove everything. The reason I'm doing this is because I think it'll be a lot easier to start from scratch and most importantly it's good practice. Now we'll still have a menu variable so let's create that local menu. We don't want it to be global so we're adding that local on there. And as well as that we also want to create another variable that will hold the player. So local PLY. And in a little bit we'll initialize this play variable to whatever is returned by the local player. And the reason for doing this is because we won't have to call local player every single time we need to use it, and the performance for this won't be noticeable at all, but it's always a good habit to avoid calling a getter function like this over and over again. With that, let's go ahead and create the function that will handle the opening of the F4 menu. And we don't want this function to be global, so we're again going to be using local function, and we're going to call this open F4 menu to make it a little bit more descriptive then end it off. And in here we are going to initialize that player variable, set it equal to local player. And after that we want an if statement that's going to be checking if is valid menu, then, then end it. If this menu is valid, in other words, if this menu has already been created and there is a value in it, and all we want to do is do menu colon show. Else, if this menu isn't valid, then we want to create it. Menu equals VGUI dot create. And what we want to create is a custom panel that we'll make in a bit that I'm going to be calling F4 menu. Again, this isn't created yet, but we will be creating that in just a bit. Next up, we want to create a panel for the shop. Local shop panel equals vgui.create. Again, we're going to be passing in a custom panel, which we will be calling shop panel, and we want to make its parent the menu. Now for this menu or the F4 menu, it's going to be based off of a D property sheet, which is a tab oriented panel. And because of this, we can easily add our shop panel to it as something called a sheet by doing menu colon add sheet. The title of the sheet, which will be shop and we will pass in the shop panel. And what this add sheet's going to do for us is it's going to create a new tab that's going to be named shop. And when that tab is clicked on or displayed, it's going to display this shop panel. And once we get into the game, this will make a lot more sense. After that, that's all that we need to do within that function. But outside of it, we want to create a new console command or add a new console command doing con command dot add. And this is just the same as the last menu we had. The con command is going to be open underscore game underscore menu. And when that console command is called, we're going to have it execute the open F4 menu function that we just created. Now with that done, we can actually create the panels. Let's start with that F4 menu panel. In order to start this, we need to create a empty table using local panel equals opening and closing curly braces. And then we want to initialize this panel using function panel colon init. And the first thing we want to do is have this panel take up almost the entire screen. To do this, we can use self colon stretch to parent. And we're just going to have an offset all around it of 100 units. Then we want this to be centered on the screen using self colon center. Then we want to make it pop up using self colon make pop up. And then we're going to be using something, or excuse me, a custom function, self colon set up close button. And this function is going to be taking in another function that is going to be called whenever the close button is pressed. And all this function is going to do is call self colon close. And lastly, we want another function in here, self colon parent to HUD. And all this is going to do is whenever the escape menu is open or the developer console is open, it's going to hide the menu from the screen. So it's not overlapping anything. 
Now let's make that setup close button function function panel colon setup close button. And this is going to take in a function. And end it. Now the first thing we want to do within this setup close button function is create another element that we're going to be calling close button self dot close button and we're going to set this equal to self dot tab scroller colon add d button and that needed to be a lowercase t and all this tab scroller is is it's a part of a d property sheet and because we are basing this menu off of a d property sheet we can access it and add to it and all it is is a horizontal scroll bar that allows the tabs within this D property sheet to be scrolled from left to right. And since we have access to that, we can easily add our own custom stuff to it. In this case, a close button that is aligned to the far right hand side of it. Now there is a problem with this that we'll most likely not encounter. But whenever there are a bunch of tabs within the D property sheet, there is the chance of this close button overlapping those tabs. Again, we'll most likely never encounter this, but that is an issue that can occur. Next, we want self.close button colon set text. And we're just going to set it to an empty string since we don't want any sort of text displayed on our button. Then we need to set what happens whenever a user clicks on the button using self.close button dot do click. And when it's clicked, all we want to do is call the function that we're passing in. And in this case, the function that's being passed in is this guy right here. And all it does is calls close and closes the panel. Now, at the moment, since there is no text being displayed thanks to this line right here, it'll just show an empty button, which isn't optimal. What we want it to do instead is show something that resembles a close button, and this can easily be done using the paint function. Self dot close button dot paint and this will be set or equal to function it'll take in a couple of arguments the panel we want to paint the width of that panel and the height of that panel then we're going to be using something called derma dot skin hook and this takes in five arguments the first one being the type of hook which in this case will be paint next is the hook that we want to run and the hook we want to run is window close. Then all we want to do is pass in the panel we want to paint it to. In this case, we want to paint it to the button. And then the width of it and the height of it. Then we want to do self.close button colon dock. And we want this to be aligned to the far right hand side of this panel. And also we want a little bit of a margin on there, self close button colon doc margin and this takes in four arguments and we want to put in zeros for all of those except for the last one which will be eight which will give us a bottom margin of eight and then self dot close button colon set size we're just going to set it to 32 by 32. now that's all that we want to do with that setup close button function we also want to create a couple of functions that will handle the showing hiding and the closing of our f4 menu to start this off, let's make one for panel colon show. And all this is going to do is self colon set visible to true. And then one for function panel colon hide. And this will do the exact opposite, self colon set visible to false. And lastly, we want to overwrite what happens whenever the panel is closed. Function panel colon close end it off and instead of removing it all i want to do is just hide it so we can easily show it again without having to recreate it every single time so to do that we just call self colon hide and that'll call this guy right up here last thing we want to do is register this custom panel using vgui dot register the name of this vgui element which will be f4 menu the table we want to use, in this case, panel. And lastly, the base control, which will be D property sheet. So that is going to create our F4 menu. Now, the only thing we have to create now is the shop panel so we can actually add it to the sheet and have it display our shop. So to do that, all we want to do to start this off is reinitialize panel to an empty table, like so. Then initialize that panel using panel colon init 
And now we want to create a few more VGUI elements. We'll have one called self.categoryList, which will be equal to VGUI.create the category list. And we're going to parent it to itself. Then we want to dock this using self.categoryList colon dock. And we want to pass in fill, all caps. And that'll just fill the entire parent that it's contained within. Now we want to create the categories, self.entity category. Set this equal to vgui.create. We want to create a D collapsible, collapsible category. And parent this to self.category list. And we also want to set the label using self.entity category colon set label. And we're going to label this guy entities. And if we just copy this again, paste it below. And instead of entity category, we also want a category for the weapons. So weapon category. And down here as well. And we don't want the label to be entities, but instead we want it to be weapons. Next up, we want to do self.entity list equal to vgui.create d icon layout. And we want to parent this to self.entity category. And all this is going to do is fill up this entity category with a list of all the entities that are in our shop. In order to actually fill it up with something, we need to do self.entity category colon set contents. And we want to set the contents of the entity category to self.entity list. Next up, we want to create a list of the weapons. So self.weapon list equals vgui.create the icon layout once again. And we want to set its parent to self.weapon category. And now we want to set the contents of self.weapon category. That contents to self.weapon list. So that'll go ahead and create the entity category in the weapon category, and it'll also set the contents of those categories to whatever is stored within this entity list and this weapon list. Now, in order to get something to display, I want to go ahead and just throw in some placeholder icons instead of adding in the entities and weapons to purchase like we did with the previous menu, as this will be replaced in the next episode with something a lot more intuitive. So let's go ahead and do that, vgui.create spawn icon. And we want to set its parent to self.entity list. And we'll just copy that and paste it below it and set this other spawn icon's parent to weapon list. And just like before, we want to register this, vgui.register. And we're going to be calling it shop panel. and its table is going to be panel, and it's going to have its base set to just D panel. And that's all that we have to do for this new menu, so let's head on into game here and test out our work. So once we're in game, if we press F4, hopefully we won't have any errors, and we don't. Now, as you can see, we have this shop tab right up here, and that's thanks to using that add sheet function right up at the top here. And within that sheet, we have the two collapsible categories, which we titled entities and weapons. And within those collapsible categories, we have the entity list, which we added a spawn icon to, as well as the weapon list, which we also added a placeholder spawn icon to. And in the top right of this menu, we have our close button that we painted. And it's not the nicest looking thing, but it gets the job done. And when we click on it, it will close out of the menu or hides the menu. So with everything working properly, that will conclude this episode. If this video was helpful to you, please hit that like button, consider subscribing, and as always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.